Hello students and welcome to yet another in a series of video lectures from individuals and families. Today's topic uh, for class 11 is organizing and advocacy. So we're taking a little bit of a different approach um, where most of our coursework has been centered on working directly with families and individuals at the micro level. Today we're going to spend some time talking about organizing advocacy um, and doing some macro level work and really understanding better the connection between the micro work that we do and the macro work that we do. So let's get started. As always, we encourage you to do your readings before you come to class and watch the video and come prepared to participate in the in-class activity uh, as well as um, the dialogue for richer learning experience. When we think about social work and social work's commitment, historically it was founded on the premise of looking at and paying very close attention to these three concepts. Uh, the notion of social reform, social justice and equality uh, has always been at our forefront. And so as we think about agencies like the NASW, National Association of Social Workers, when we think about CWSE, the Council of Social Work Education, which is the accrediting body, the, the accrediting body for um, all of the school of social workers in the United States. Um, and the educational policy, EPOS, that really talks about and really put together and does some planning around organizing the work that social workers do and how they're trained and how they're educated. So again, just a brief reminder here that um, this is historical and kind of the genesis of social work in and of itself. When we think about macro practice, um, it's a little bit of a different set of circumstances in that for the most part when we're looking at micro level we're looking at individuals themselves families or small groups but as we think about macro practice expanding all of that uh, we're looking at what constitutes um, a much larger community where the social problems are actually there so when we think about macro think about it's the same system approach, but it's at a much larger scale. And so rather than uh, families as your constituents uh, or as the clients that we could be working with, it's actually communities. It could be um, organizations. It could be an entire state, depending on the severity or the depth of the actual issue. Uh, so we'll spend some time uh, in this chapter, chapter 14, linking those together, that micro and macro, looking at some macro practice intervention strategies. Um, analyzing social problems, understanding social justice, things of that particular nature. There's a clear and sometimes not so clear linkage between macro and micro practice in terms of those actions. So one way to think about um, the whole notion of the linkage between the two is to really look at how you define the actual problem. Um, in terms of how that linkage actually gets made. And so um, as we think about um, asking questions around, so for example, if we work in an organization that provides services to veterans, um, we know that there are a large number of veterans who have served our country and served our country well and faithfully but often return with um, significant issues around readjusting uh, employment and any number of other things that we take a look at. So at a, mac at a micro level, you're working with these individuals uh, to help resolve some of those issues. And then you ask yourself the question, so if we're starting to see more and more veterans returning home with these types of issues, then we can see that it's a lot more widespread than just the interaction with our client. And so we then need to start to think about what a solution might be or how we can actually uh, affect some change for that population 
uh, as a population, not just as individuals. So that's an example, looking at the vast number of, of veterans who may be suffering with uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, and then looking at policy to make sure that as those veterans return, um, they will have access to the things that they need so that they can readjust uh, to normal life. So that's one example of how that linkage might actually work. So when we think about, uh, again, from a conceptual framework standpoint, um, and we're looking at these concentric circles, we think about identifying the problem, identifying then who that population is, you know, is it um, Latino males, is it uh, Native American folks, is it um, younger European Americans? Who's the population and what's the problem that they're experiencing in what arena? So what communities, what organizations have uh, their hands in either the solution or works with this population? And then also looking at all of these particular models in the context of the political system that we live and work in, in terms of uh, the policy context and in the political pieces. So. We, as we know, government uh, sets, passes laws that are generally intended to look at the safe keeping, um, the freedom of our liberties um, against tyranny and against exploitation uh, from ourselves as well as from other nations. So as we think about the function of government and politics and we start to recognize that there are problems that do exist for certain populations, we do have to consider that political uh, policy context when we're starting to think about how we problem solve at the macro level. So understanding the problem, looking at it in its proper context, then moves us towards this notion of developing and mobilizing resources. So having to, once we recognize the problem and we have clear consensus that there are things that are happening uh, in this community, and some of the questions that help me start to think of our resources are, are listed here in the blue. So um, if we think about, for example, the example that I used earlier in terms of the veterans returning from war with significant issues around adjusting, uh, we need to pay attention to um, are there unmet needs, are there gaps, are there veterans that are for reasons of bureaucracy or rules falling through the cracks? Um, I think, for example, right now, if, if we start to look at, it's interesting that I picked veterans, but as I think about what's happening in the news right now, there has been a change in leadership uh, at the VA hospitals because veterans were systematically having to wait longer for appointments or not getting appointments at all, and they were in need of these services. So there are service issues or gaps within the VA system that actually become barriers for our servicemen getting the help that they actually need and so the political response is to look at then changing who's in leadership uh, as a way of starting that particular process so again when we're thinking about uh, developing and mobilizing resources it's really about understanding these questions that are here and then being able to develop these resources uh, with these diverse groups that are affected by this scenario So we're going to need to be able to set up systems of contact. Uh, what kinds of events or what kinds of outreach are we going to look at doing in terms of connecting with people, giving them a reason to join? Are we canvassing, spreading flyers, are we going door to door, we're knocking? Uh, are we using social media? Uh, again, when we're looking at the resources, once we understand the problem, it's around building synergy, uh, around involving the community in its own destiny. Advocacy and social action. Um, when we're thinking about advocacy, it's really around advocating for what's fair and what's just for um, the people in our society who may otherwise have no other voice. And so it becomes really incumbent upon us um, in the work that we do is to really understand how um, to analyze policies, understand how organizations in our communities actually work, 
uh, because it's in those places where we need to sometimes do the advocacy in terms of making sure that clients' needs are actually met. So um, the advocacy social action pieces are just paramount to the work that you will do as social workers. And as you find yourself entering into the field, whether you were a private agency or a private nonprofit, the system issues around the need for social action become more apparent when you start to see entire uh, categories of clients that are unduly burdened or discriminated against or have no access to the resources that they need. Um, and it's it's a call for them to social action and the advocacy piece to kick into place. And you all have actually or will have a taste of um, what advocacy looks like in terms of the intersection with politics by participating in our annual social work day at the Capitol where you as social workers, newer social workers, march on the Capitol, meet with legislators to talk about the issues that are affecting the communities that we live in and trying to garner support as well as to educate those particular professionals about uh, or those legislators about uh, what needs to happen and why. So more to come. Um, community organizing uh, is also very important in terms of being able to mobilize, to develop leadership, to have strategies, and to make sure that you're representing quite well the communities that you're serving. And so uh, lots of grassroots movements have come up through the years. Um, for example, um, when you think about, uh, we don't pay a lot of attention to them today, but neighborhood watches in some neighborhoods, uh, neighborhoods have captains and have people who are responsible for um, watching the neighborhood to make sure that there are there's a there's no illegal activity taking place uh, or that um, there are clear warnings about uh, what the expectation is for being in this neighborhood um, and to make sure that we're working together as a community to maintain a certain degree of safety so when you think about community organizing think about uh, things that are happening in your very own community uh, that organically came up that really are around addressing the unique needs of that particular community. And also recognizing that community organization requires um, some skills in all these areas around social planning, capacity building, getting people ready, uh, dealing with the ethical issues as well, um, the use of social media or not. These are all things that are important when you think about uh, moving into community organization. These are the level of contacts that you'll see in the community. When we're also looking at organizational environments, um, I think about a larger organization that I work for. Uh, a county organization um, and that unique intersection um, as a person in management around what those policies and practice were, what drove them from the federal and the state level and how they trickle down to um, the actual work products and outcomes and expectations uh, for our staff. Uh, and even in that, uh, in the, some of the most well-meaning or well-intentioned uh, public policy or, or legislation, we still found ourselves with clients that um, were actually harmed by some of those particular findings. And so it becomes our responsibilities within the context of the organization to educate and to connect with policymakers around what um, the actual outcome of the policies and statutes that have been put in place. So organizational environments and advocacy as well as macro work in this area is also very important because this is where oftentimes it can be perpetuated if it's not closely monitored. Also understanding organizational change, um, being able to be in places where um, staff are seen as agents of change and organizational change can be very difficult and very, very tedious depending on the scope size of the agency uh, funding sources and their own political connections. So when you think about organizational change, um, and I always say to folks that um, change is not an event, it's a process. And so it's recognizing um, all the players that need to be a part, 
of that particular change dynamic and why we're moving forward. So again, when we're looking at macro practice evaluation, it's going to be very important that we really pay attention to, to the evidence-based practice. And so understanding and evaluating to make sure that the work that we have done does have measurable outcomes or is a process of ongoing evaluation so that we continue to see uh, items change in a very positive way for the communities that we are trying to impact and trying to serve. So when you think about some of the larger social issues around education and school and homelessness, um, and chemical dependency and violence and criminal activity, when we think about it from a macro perspective, you know, are we able to intervene with uh, the community and as well as the political leaders to make sure that we bring about effective change and how we measure that? So keeping in mind that measurement is always important because the evidence-based practice is a, the cornerstone of social work practice. So with that, that's all I have for this portion uh, of our video lecture. So as again, as I indicated earlier, uh, please come to Class Repair, um, ready to talk about advocacy and organizing um, and macro practice. So thank you for your time and attention, and I'll see you in class.